Sonny Chaparella, thank you so much. Thank uh, you for having me. Why are you running? I love my country a lot. I'm a legal immigrant, and the state of the country that I see right now um, made me decide to run. Um, one, because I love President Trump. Uh, he's my role model. And um, I, I wanted to help President Trump out. And the second thing is I abhor socialism. And I do not like what Omar and the squad stand for. I wanted to uh, step up and uh, be a counter uh, voice for uh, all that these are espousing. So what is the essence of your campaign? The, uh, so I am for the Constitution. I am for the basics. I am pro-guns, pro-life, and uh, supporting President Trump. And so uh, why do you think you're in a kind of a crowded uh, Republican primary? Why do you think voters should vote for you as opposed to the others in the race? Um, because I have the, I am a legal immigrant. I have gone through the process of the entire immigration process, which took um, uh, eight, nine years, I believe. That's once my dad applied, and he had to wait before applying. And that's once he applied, and, and then having a lawyer involved. Um, so I went through the entire immigration process, the applications, the background checks, the police checks, the, the medical um, checks. I went through all that. And uh, I come from India, which is a mixed economy, which is kind of socialist, where there is big government. I have seen and experienced big government. Um, so the, uh, the main problems right now that our country is facing is immigration. Well, one of the main is immigration and uh, this new thing about socialism. So with my unique experiences with those, I think I would be a better candidate because I understand the sensitivities of an immigration, I understand the sensitivities of people living in a big government state. Um, and third, I started a, a small job, just like many people who start out. Uh, my first job was telemarketing, um, uh, timeshare of all. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of them, the most hated. Uh, so I started. I started there, and uh, today I own two small businesses, uh, not very big, but but I've gone so far in my opinion, and I am the American dream. So I'm everything that America would need to hear from. I believe right now at this point. So because of my experiences and because of what I am, I believe I would be the best candidate. You mentioned immigration. Yes. Uh, is that one of your top three priorities? Yes. Uh, what are your, what do you hope to accomplish uh, as it relates to immigration? Um, I'm for President Trump's uh, immigration reform. We're dealing with the uh, illegals along with uh, also reforming the current processes where it, it takes years and years and years um, for any application to be processed. So um, immigration reform. So you want to speed up the process for legal immigrants? Yes. And as far as illegal immigration, you support the president's uh, expanding of the border wall? Oh, absolutely. Why is that important to you? Uh, because it, uh, to, uh, I know, pe I've heard stories of people like walking across the uh, border. And India does not allow that. Other countries don't allow that. India ones did not allow me to come in when I didn't have the right paperwork. They sent me back from the airport, I mean here. But they did not let me come in, even though they know I'm not going to live there. And America lets people just walk in. Uh, that, that's, that's crazy to me. And, um, and um, you are in the news, so you probably know this, uh, recently, it, they sent a plane full of Indian people who came here uh, at the border, and they found them, and they're from India. So what they did was they came from uh, India. There are people that are selling uh, these packages where they come and drop you off at 
or wherever, and they'll show you the way how to get in. And uh, they came in, and a, a six-year-old girl died. An Indian six-year-old girl died while crossing, and they found a whole bunch of people. They put them on a plane and sent them to America. I'm uh, sorry, sent them to India. There are people coming from China. So there are these new businesses there that are in the business of bringing them here and leaving them, and they can walk across. It, it, that, that's just so bizarre to me because um, we had 9-11. It takes one person. Uh, it, I don't know why more people are not talking about the safety issue. I'm extremely concerned. We had to go through so many background checks. The they actual, uh, 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 if we had anything criminal, if we, if we ever went to a communist rally, our, our applications would be tossed out. So why is it that, uh, you know, from there, just letting anyone walk in without betting the, where they are, what's stopping from another terrorist from walking in? Um, wanted to ask you about uh, one aspect that's generated a lot of headlines and controversy is what to do with the dreamers. These are the people who were brought in when they were young by their parents when they crossed the border illegally. And so what should be done for them? Should they have a path to citizenship? And uh, or should there be a should there still be a threat of deportation? Uh, because these are not uh, people who committed, and because they are older, uh, they are over 18. They need. They we need to discuss some kind of way of them um, getting into the uh, system. So some kind of uh, way. Um, not a pathway to citizenship, but uh, uh, figuring out how best we can, like for instance, military or school or whatever it is, how best we, we if they are useful to the country, a way for them. And, um, you know, as far as their, so uh, you're saying a legalization, not necessarily citizenship? Uh, that okay, uh, that I think there needs to be for further discussion because it is a very tough topic. It is a very uh, difficult topic, and the, we need to discuss ways for them to to get there again, depending on how how uh, how useful their skills are to the country. So. Uh, let, let me tell you, so when America does uh, immigration, they always look at what education you have, what it is you have, and, and how are you going to benefit the country. That has always been the case. That has always been the case. And if you, and not just that, uh, if you, they would want, if your dad didn't make money, or if your parents didn't make money, or whoever is, is not making money to support you, you're not allowed. That and and all these H one visas, everyone had to fulfill a specified skill that is needed in America. So every single person that comes the legal way fulfills a need that that we have. It has always been skilled immigration. So so something similar to that. And what about the estimated 11 to 12 million people who have been living in this country? Uh, they're here illegally, but they've been living in the country for decades. Um, some say, you know, they should be given a path to citizenship. Others say no. What do you say? No. Uh, our country is respected because we 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 have we are we have laws. And if if uh, uh, why is it that one some of them are okay if they've broke broken the laws? And we should not give that message out. And if you broke the law. I'm, I'm sorry, and uh, and that they tried working that out during Reagan time. That didn't work out very well. What are your other two top priorities aside from immigration? Uh, my other two top priorities is uh, stopping the socialistic talk and stopping the socialism, and stopping anything that the squad would be trying to pass. Just, just. I don't believe they are good people. I do not believe uh, an immigrant who comes here takes, uh, utilizes everything that this wonderful country has to offer, it gets where they are because of the goodness of the country, because of the laws of this country, because of the benevolence of this country, and turns back and says this is a bad country. 
so that that is wrong on so many levels that so i don't believe these are the kind of people that should be passing any legislation so i would be stopping anything that these people the squad would try to pass uh, my other thing is because trump has been my role model even prior to coming into politics in uh, i like i loved his tenacity while he was in the primary and he was in the general, um, so I and I love this whole make first, uh, make America first agenda because I have seen when I go to India or when I go to other countries, they laugh at us and tr Trump used that exact word. People are laughing at us. They say you guys give money to countries that don't like you. That. It's, it's insulting, it's bad, it's sad. So I love, uh, President Trump understands all that, so completely, totally support President Trump's agenda. As far as uh, socialism is concerned, what do you make of the fact that Bernie Sanders at this point is leading in the Democratic primary for a president? That is very sad, that is extremely sad that uh, many people think socialism a beautiful thing, it's a great thing, it's Alice in Wonderland or something, it is, it is sad. And I think we need to step up uh, uh, talking, bringing more awareness, educating people on the ills of socialism. There's not one country that has been, that has succeeded with socialism. People are last. People's rights are trampled upon. The, and I don't understand this thing about with people going and telling Bernie Sanders or whoever, hey, we have too much of money, like take our money away. And hey, we have too much rights, take away our rights. Bizarro world, that is, to me, it's, it's, it's bizarre. So it is, it is sad, Bernie Sanders is crazy, he is. I don't even know how, if, if he's crazy or if he, if he just wants power. You, you, you can't have so many uh, three houses or two houses or how many you have and espouse socialism to somebody else. That, that, but, but to answer your question, it is, it is sad. Let me ask you about um, some other issues that people are discussing. Uh, one of them is health care. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the Democrats have been discussing about a public option for Medicare, Medicare for all, which would eliminate uh, private health insurance or just building up Obamacare. Uh, Republicans have, have said for more competition. Where are you on all of this as far as how to make health care more accessible and affordable to people? First of all, removing private health insurance once again is a bizarro concept to me. I don't understand that. I don't get that uh, because when I started uh, in working in this country with telemarketing, then I became a sort. I've done several jobs, so I wanted to get into real estate. You have Abby Halliday, Keller Williams. You, you you have all these huge, humongous corporations, and I'm one small person, knew nobody, knew did not know anyone in Dallas. Did I didn't go to school here? I didn't. All my only connections were my Silver Leaf resorts, my co-workers over there that all made nine dollars an hour so that's not the uh, uh, people who are buying so uh, for but i got in i got in because this country was open to competition i competed on i compete competed and gave lower pricing than the other people did they i had the freedom to do that nobody told me how to do my business and and with that today i have been able to go uh, and become a broker and and also build a brokerage with several agents so removing private thing is beyond me i don't get that um, as far as healthcare what i do, what do i believe in First of all, I don't have health insurance because it is too expensive. So right now I don't have health insurance at all. So um, what I do is uh, whenever I have, um, I need to go to the doctor, I, I call around, I check around to say, and I say, I'm coming in this for this, how much is it? Or I'm coming in for this test, how much would it be? I check prices uh, around. And I go to whoever is the lowest price who's, who's, who I like. So price transparency, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, what what would your plan be, though? You know? Pri price, uh, price transparency need to be there. Selling um, uh, healthcare across state lines um, need, uh, needs to be there, and uh, reducing uh, prescription costs. Um, and that would be a the government putting a lid on on prescription prices. Uh, letting com letting competition. 
um, compete on the prices. And then let me ask you about uh, guns. Yes. Uh, you said you were pro-gun. Um, as you know, Democrats say they want uh, increased background checks, uh, universal background checks. Where are you on background checks and on red flag laws? Uh, on red flag laws, I am against red flag laws. On background checks, we already have that. We already, felon, felons cannot buy uh, guns. So I think that's, that's good enough, just enforcement of that. Um, if, if, that, if that is your question. Red flag laws, absolutely not. Why not? Uh, because nobody uh, gets, to, gets to go check on somebody with, without, having, uh, without having a reason. They, 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 they can't. And, and second thing is it's, it's your right. It's, it's, uh, any further infringement, any further burden on that would to me be an infringement on, on your right. Even if there is a due process? There's no due process. But if that were to be baked into the law, where you'd have to go before a judge? So I, so let's say a boyfriend and girlfriend fight with each other and the girlfriend goes and, com go goes and complains and then, the, and then they go in front of the judge? Uh, I, I, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how you could get around the due process on that, honestly. And uh, let me ask you as far as uh, jobs and tax cuts and all that, um, where are you on tax cuts? Do you want to make them permanent, as some others have said? Uh, yes, but tax cuts are the reason we see a booming um, economy right now. President Trump's tax cuts have worked. It's uh, and, and me as a uh, self-employed uh, person, sometimes I do see um, how much I get after taxes, and that's how I decide whether I, you know, whether whether I need to take. Sometimes it plays into my decision of whether taking up a new job or not do a job. So you know, the more the more money I get in my pocket, the more incentive I have for working more. So you know, uh, Laffer Square, uh, Laffer's curve. Um, I, I think that is true in. Uh, you know, the lower tax cuts, more more production, and thereby more revenue, more in in more taxes for the government, more money to the government. Okay, so you're saying lowering taxes yes. will actually increase revenue? Yes. Because because more and more, because that's an incentive. I, I am being in, in, in incentivized for uh, working. So if I'm working and let's, I'm just throwing arbitrary numbers. If I'm working and if uh, I have to pay 40 or 50% tax, I, uh, I'd be like, yeah, you know, maybe I don't care. Maybe uh, Sunday, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll just uh, go, to a, go to the movies. But uh, if I get a job and if, I, if they say, like, I can, again, arbitrary numbers, but if I, if, if I know, okay, this job I'll, I'm going to get after taxes, I'm going to get 90%, I'd be like, yeah, the movie, I can, like, wait on the movie, let me go do this thing. So, you know, I think it, it would, who wouldn't be motivated by more money in the pocket? At the end of the day, it's more money in the pocket. I, so maybe Bernie Sanders wouldn't be motivated. I don't know how his brain works, but I, I, any regular norm, normal person I would think would be motivated. So the more motivation you are, the more work, the more you're working, the more you're working, the more. So if uh, 10 people work like that at that uh, 10, again, arbitrary numbers at that 10%, that's higher than one person paying 40%. As you know, impeachment is now over. And so what do you think should happen now in Congress? Regarding? Well, there's some Democrats say that they want the investigations to continue against President Trump. Where are you on all that? Investigations. Well, House, their House Democrats are still continuing their investigations. Are investigations Trump. doing what? You've investigated the president for three years. Isn't that enough? In fact, uh, you know, what are we going to give the president or, or whoever it is who's been wrongfully investigated? The saddest thing is on the impeachment is, and uh, I came to this country 18 years ago. I studied the Constitution. I studied our history. I studied all these things. I can make sense. I don't. I. I. I would think that they would teach history to everyone. They would teach politics to everybody. I don't understand how such basics are not 
un understood by these Democrats, all of them right now, is because what is the articles of uh, what are the articles of impeachment? There are two lines written there or two sentences that do not specify a statute or that do not specify an article of the Constitution. How do you prosecute somebody? Forget impeachment. I don't even think like a judge in Dallas should, should prosecute anyone when there is no statute that's broken. And you take it to the highest level with no law stated that has been broken. No statute, no law, no article that has been broken. That is wrong. That's just wrong. That's not how this country is. This is a country where I was told, and I learned when I first country, I had to learn, right, that we are innocent until proven guilty. I don't even know what this is. Forget uh, Brett Kavanaugh where he was, uh, you know, guilty until proven innocent. To be held that in Congress, very, very, very sad. In From guilty until proven innocent to I don't even know what this is. I, I don't even know what crime it is. It, it, it is uh, that. So en enough of this uh, in investiga wrongful investigations. Let me ask you one other thing, and that is, as you know, this is a wide open seat because Congressman Kenny Marchin is retiring. Yes. So why do you think a Republican will be able to hold on to this seat? Because Republicans have the common sense answers. They do. We do have the common sense answers because we are, we are, Republicans are the embodiment of compassion. Now, many people don't say that, but Republicans are for, uh, let's take wa uh, uh, wage, um, uh, minimum wage. Republicans are not for m minimum wage being a living wage. Just like when I started, we want these people to ride up the ladder. We don't want them to be there, so we want them to ride up the ladder. Uh, we are compassionate in that. We are compassionate in the, sen in, in the sense that we don't want permanent welfare because what good is it? You know, you, you enjoy your job. I enjoy my job. How would you feel if you are like getting some, a check from the government and you have to sit on your couch all day long? That is taking away the essence of your life. That is ripping your soul out. I don't want that on anyone. I want everyone to live their life to their fullest. I want everyone to go out there and do what they want. I want them to have plenty of opportunities, which is what Republicans are from, so that they can pick and choose what they love and do it and feel so good, so good. And they can have a very good night's sleep at the end of the day. I want them to have a very full life while they're on, on, on Earth. So Republican Party is the compassionate party. We want, we want everyone to have everything. We want people to make more money, more and more and more money. And uh, uh, all these people that make more money, um, and, and you probably know this, whenever there is a calamity anywhere in the world, not the government, but American individuals are the ones that give the most. American individuals, if you add up, they give the most. So what would happen uh, we, if we want more opportunities and everyone makes more money, the, the charity would increase. Everything would, would, would increase. So if one person makes more money, I would be able to help somebody more. Not just in terms of employment, but even in terms of charity. Yes, we cannot say that how much one would give, but it's not going to be 100% like nobody would give. Uh, and I'm not, the government would not uh, need to tell somebody to do charity. They are done every single day. I'm sure you do it in your own way. I'm sure he does it in his own way. I, I, I do it in my own way with the incomes that we have, but we all do it. I can guarantee you, you do it. I, I, you didn't tell me that, but, but I, 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 I am pretty sure you do it. So the more income we have, the more we, we can do it. So I don't see any Republican thing, any Republican value or principle that is against compassion, that is everything for compassion. Healthcare, we want people to get healthcare. We want them to have more options. We want them, like the price transparency I was uh, speaking about, not the single payer thing where somebody tells you what to do. We, we want everyone to have the healthcare that they get to keep. Like when Obamacare said you don't, you get to keep your doctor, it didn't happen. And, uh, and and the other thing is when they said at a, at a certain point, you are too old, you know? 
Republicans are out of that. Republicans want somebody to live for 150 years if you can live. That you know, Republicans want great health for people. So what is it of Republicans that is not compassionate? It is the compassionate party. The Republicans have the most compassion. Democrats, I don't think they have compassion because they, this whole socialist thing. I mean, it's obvious right now with Bernie Sanders' win, we can pretty much see that socialism is the democratic platform. Um, taking away somebody's rights, infringing on somebody's rights, how is that compassion? It is not. Taking away somebody's rights, taking away somebody's money, that is ruthless. So I would think that people, people would want to have the compassionate party uh, be their representative. Sunny Chaparella, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate thank you it. so much. Thank you.